Hi, it's Dr. Isom. I'm here to give you the first part of the lecture on personality anatomy and physiology. This part will be an introduction to the study of the anatomy and physiology of personality. In this series of lectures, I will talk about several things, including structure of the brain, anatomy, size, shape, connectivity, how those things are related to personality, but also how our biochemistry, our neurochemistry is related to personality. So neurotransmitters, hormones. And then last, we'll talk about the connections between all of these things, structure, anatomy, neurochemistry, and the big five. How are differences in our physiology related to differences in our behavior that is measured by the big five traits. We all have unique bodies. We differ in terms of hair color and eye color and skin color and size and shape and height and weight. And we know that those are related to our genetics. So it doesn't seem too unusual to suppose that perhaps there are also some biological and genetic mechanisms that are related to differences in our behavior and on our personality. It seems like it's a reasonable assumption. So this is the main goal of people who study personality psychology from the physiological perspective. That is to figure out what are the mechanisms that make us different? In what ways are we different physiologically from each other? And how are those differences associated or related to personality traits and differences in behavior? Are they related to differences in the functioning and maybe the size and shape of different structures in the brain? Are they related to different levels of neurotransmitters like dopamine and norepinephrine? Are differences in personality related to differences in hormones like testosterone, oxytocin, estrogen? These are some of the questions that personality psychologists from the biological perspective address. I will talk about many of the research methods used by personality neuroscientists, as well as highlighting important findings that have been made in this area. Before I do that though, I want to cover something that is a very important issue for those that want to study the anatomy and physiology of personality, and that is the mind-body problem. The mind-body problem essentially has two sides, although there are variations on those two sides, but the two sides are this. There is something called dualism, and that is the belief that your body and your mind are completely separate entities. So you have a physical body and you have a mind or a soul or a spirit that is not physical, and it is not something that is a product of the body. The other view is called monism, and that is the idea that your body and your mind are essentially the same thing. They're both made of matter and energy, and your mind or your soul, your spirit, it is all a product of the functioning of neurons, neurons firing in your brain. The mind is simply produced by your physical body. So there's no difference between the mind and the body. That's the idea of monism. You can believe either view, but if you want to study the anatomy and physiology of personality, you have to be able to measure the anatomy and physiology that you believe contributes to our thoughts and our emotions and our feelings. And so by definition, you have to go with the monist view. We don't have any way to measure soul or spirit or mind other than defining it as a product of your neurons firing or your physical body. So most personality neuroscientists go with the monism view and they would call themselves monists because they believe that personality, our feelings, our behaviors, our soul, if you want to call it that, our mind is a product of our physical body and specifically our brain. In the last part of this introductory lecture, I'm going to briefly mention the ways that personality, behavior, thoughts, emotions, has been related to the physical body and particularly the brain. And I will also introduce the parts of the brain that are known to have significant relations with personality. I will discuss the structures in the brain that have been studied in the context of personality traits in more detail in a later lecture. Personality neuroscientists have really focused on two main ways to connect personality and behavior, and that is by looking at the anatomy, the structure, and the functioning of different parts of the brain, and also the biochemistry, or the neurotransmitters and hormones that are associated with personality.
Research has established that all of these things are related to personality and behavior, the structure of the brain, the functioning of different parts of the brain, specifically if certain parts are damaged, and also different levels of neurotransmitters and hormones. Those have been established as being very related to personality traits. When we're talking about the relations between the brain and personality, what we're really talking about are neurons, because neurons are what comprise the cerebral cortex, they are arguably the most important part of the entire brain. And here's the parts of the neuron that are most important. First, we have the dendrites. Those are the part of the neuron that receive signal, receive stimulation from other neurons. The cell body that conducts that stimulation or signal. And the axons are the part of the neurons that send messages. So the human brain has anywhere from 85 to 100 billion neurons, and each one of those neurons can be connected up to 10,000 times. So you can imagine the complexity of how the brain is connected. And so it's really difficult to study relations between personality and behavior in the brain. But a lot of strides have been made in research and technology that has allowed us to have a window into the brain to relate brain activity and brain function and brain structure to personality and behavior. Neuroscience research has identified specific parts of the brain that seem consistently related to differences in personality. And some of the ones that are most important are the frontal cortex or the frontal lobes, and those are located here in the front part of the head. The frontal lobes have been associated with things like decision making and planning and things like moral reasoning. Essentially behaviors that are related to traits like conscientiousness. We also know that the amygdala, this little structure in green here, is something that has been highly related to processing of emotion, specifically processing of threat or reward. It's very closely connected to the hippocampus, which is a structure that's involved in memory. And so one of the things that's really important about this is that all of our memories are coded with emotion so that we remember the things that are positive and rewarding to us, but we remember to avoid those things that can be potentially threatening or harmful. Other parts of the brain that have been associated with personality are the hypothalamus. That's this little structure, this little pink structure right above the amygdala. It's involved in our fight or flight response. It's involved in a lot of basic processes that function to maintain homeostasis in our body or an optimal balance in our body. And part of that is maintaining our emotional well-being. So the hypothalamus plays a strong role in that. It and the amygdala have been associated specifically with neuroticism and measures of anxiety in personality. Another part of the brain that has been found to be important is also the cingulate. The cingulate is a structure that's been associated with anxiety, and it's also been found to be important for the experience of normal emotion and controlling emotional responses and impulsive behavior. It's been related to neuroticism. These structures on this slide make up some of the structures that we refer to as the limbic system, the structures in the brain that deal with emotions. But when we're talking about them, we have to remember that they function and they're connected by the firing of neurons, neurons that send connections through axons to other parts of the brain. And even though research has supported relations between some of these structures with personality, it doesn't mean these structures work independently. They are all connected as part of a system and circuits. And that's it for the introduction. 